Okay, so if we're trying to add two thirds and five sixths, obviously the common denominator there is six. Now what you need to do to achieve that common denominator is you need to multiply three by two, but if you multiply three by two, you gotta multiply the numerator by two. So that is four sixths plus five sixths, which is nine over six, which will simplify to three over two, okay? Sometimes there is some simplifying that needs to be done, so keep that in the back of your mind as well. Three-fourths minus one-third. <clears throat> we need a common denominator. The least common multiple is 12, so we need to multiply the first one by 3 over 3 and the second one by 4 over 4. Nine-twelfths minus four-twelfths, so that gives us 5 over 12. And the same premise applies if we've got to do three of them. Okay, we just got an extra one in there. Uh, the common denominator here is still 12. Uh, multiply the first one by two, the second one by four, and the last one by three. Now, I'm sure you can probably do most of this part in your head, which is fine, but I am trying to draw a parallel here to what we're doing today. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm writing it out like this. So two plus four is six, six minus nine is negative three, and that will simplify to negative one-fourth, okay? So we're gonna throw some variables in there and see what's the same, what's a little bit different. So we're gonna add and subtract rational expressions today. It's our target. Um, our goal, first thing, you should always factor everything that you can and find the least common denominator. Okay, there's actually some cases where you need to simplify before we even start doing this. It'll make your life a lot easier in the end. Um, after you find the LCD, then you want to make all of your rational expressions have that common denominator. Then all you do is add slash subtract your numerators, simplify, and reduce. It sounds really simple, but hopefully I'm going to be able to point out the most common mistakes that people make so that you do not do that as well. All right, so that first example, I kind of have worked out on your paper, so I just kind of want you to follow along here. Four over x plus two plus seven over x minus three. Now, those x's do not count for uh, being the same, okay? When we're trying to find a common denominator here, that entire factor of x plus two will have to be uh, in the other denominator in order for it to, to count as it being in both. So in this case, our least common denominator is simply um, x plus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, and I really encourage you to write that over to the side or something like that when you're doing these problems so that you keep that in the back of your mind. And I have it listed there on your paper. So then the question is, what am I missing so I can determine what I need to multiply each one by? So that first one has the x plus 2. It does not have the x minus 3. And if you multiply the bottom, you have to multiply the top. The second one is missing the x plus 2 piece. So if we multiply it on the bottom, we've got to multiply by it on the top. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 4 to the first one and the 7 to the second one. So we've got 4x minus 12 over x minus 3 times x plus 2 plus 7x plus 14 over x minus 3 times x plus 2. I don't multiply out the denominators, okay? I just leave them the way that they, that they are. Um, now I have the exact same denominator for both expressions, so all I need to do is add my like terms in the numerator. So 4x plus 7x is 11x, negative 12 plus 14 is positive 2. And just like with my fractions, I don't repeat anything, okay? I've combined these two rational expressions so they are over just a single common denominator, all right? And in this case, that's all we can do, okay? 11x plus 2 doesn't factor. There's no more simplifying to be done uh, for this problem, okay? Um, just uh, a little tip, it does take a little bit of time, but you could check this just like we talked about checking our factoring. You can, in your calculator, you could type in uh, that first expression. The only thing you need to remember is when you type in that denominator, it has more than one term, so you need to put it in parentheses. And then you can 
type in the second one. Okay, and then type in your answer in Y2. Again, making sure that you put parentheses around the numerator and then a big set of parentheses around that denominator. Okay, and then you can check the table and make sure that your Y values are the exact same for each and they are. Um, so that's, that's one way to check yourself. You just have to be really, really careful with your parentheses. Okay, you have to be really careful with your parentheses if you do that to check yourself. Okay, uh, let's look at example two. Okay, let's look at example two. Now, I'm actually going to do this a little bit differently than what I have written on the paper because it turns out that uh, if I factor everything the way that I was supposed to, uh, this actually simplifies before I even try and put these together. So let's do that, okay? Um, the first one, obviously negative x in the numerator, it does not factor, okay? But the denominator factors into x plus two times x plus one. That second numerator, what can I factor out of the second numerator? A negative one. So that becomes negative one times x plus three. The second denominator, we've got factors into x plus three times x plus two. So we can actually make life a little bit easier on ourselves. We have x plus three in the numerator and in the denominator of that second fraction. Now it only works if it's within its own fraction at this point, okay? Um, if I had an x plus three in the other denominator, I couldn't do that. Okay, because they're separated by that minus sign, but because they're in the same rational expression, I can simplify that. Okay, um, so I just made life a little bit easier because now we've almost got a common denominator. Both of them have x plus 2. All right, both of them have an x plus 2. It's just the fact that the first one also has x plus 1. So how about we fix it so that the second one has an x plus 1. Multiply it top and bottom. So the first one I'm not doing anything to because it's already got everything that it needs. The second one, um, first thing that I'm going to do is we've got minus and a negative one right there. I'm just going to turn that into plus. Okay, subtracting that negative one right there um, is the same as adding. So then we've just got x plus one in that numerator. And we've got x plus 2 times x plus 1 in the denominator. Now, at this point, I don't want to cancel the x plus 1 that's in the numerator and in the denominator because I, I need that so that they have the exact same denominator so I can put them together. Okay? And I'm trying to put them together here. So, um, combining those numerators, adding them, negative x plus x. Is zero. So all we have is that, that plus one right there over x plus two times x plus one. Okay. So I did it differently than what I have outlined on the note sheet. You can do it both ways, um, but I just saved myself a little bit of work by simplifying before I tried to put it Let's do example number three. So, we need a factor. Just always, always, always start by factor. So that numerator, can't do anything with that. But the denominator, what is that factor? X plus three times X minus two. Minus that second numerator can't do anything with that. The second denominator is x plus 3 times x plus 1. So our LCD, go through your denominators. We've got x plus 3 and x minus 2 in the first denominator. 
In the second denominator, we already have x plus 3 listed, so the only thing that we need is x plus 1. So we need to go back and we need to add in what our expressions are missing. The first one is missing the x plus 1. The second one is missing the x minus 2. Plus. Okay. So, I'm going to multiply out x plus 1 times x minus 1 is x squared minus 1. I'm going to go ahead and put them together. Okay, just to save myself some writing here. So minus, that minus sign's got to come down right there. Because it's a minus, you must put a set of parentheses. Okay, you must put a set of parentheses right there because that negative's got to get applied to everything in that second numerator. All right, when it's a plus, it doesn't matter. Okay, but when it's a minus, you've got to apply it. So x minus 2 times x minus 2 is x squared minus 4x plus 4. And that's all over my common denominator. I like to go in numerical order, so I'm going to list that as x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x plus 3. The order really doesn't matter, okay? just so your signs are correct. This is one of my little habits. Okay, that negative needs to be applied to that trinomial right there. So we've got x squared minus x squared, so that goes away. The next term would be a positive 4x. And then our constants, we have negative 1 minus 4, so that's minus 5. And our denominator is still x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x plus 3. Okay, I'm going too fast, just right, too slow. Okay. Let's do one more together. Let's throw three of them in there. Why not, right? Okay, 2 over x minus 1 plus 1 over x minus x plus 3 over x squared minus 1. All right, just to save myself some room here, I'm just going to factor right under where it's at so I don't have to rewrite all this stuff because the only thing that I can factor is that final denominator. Okay. So my LCD here, I'm just going to go through all my denominators. That first denominator has x minus 1. The second denominator has an x all by itself. That counts as a separate factor, okay? That counts as a separate factor. And then the only thing new that shows up in the third denominator is x plus 1. So that means the first denominator is missing an x, and it is missing x plus 1. And I'm just kind of making it fit wherever I can. The second denominator is missing x minus 1 and x plus 1. The last is only missing that single factor of x. So now they all have the same denominator, so I'm going to combine two steps in one. I'm going to do all my distributing, and I'm going to go ahead and, and make it a single rational expression. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x plus 1 times, well, multiplying something by 1 doesn't change it, so I'm going to go ahead, x minus 1 times x plus 1, that's x squared minus 1 my middle one. And then the last one, it's minus 
x times x plus 3. So I'm going to look at it as I'm distributing a negative x. So negative x times x.